Good morning, mathematicians. Today we're going to be taking a look at Lesson 2.8, Displaying Data with Graphs. The goal is to guide the construction and use of graphs for a set of collected data. Your goal should already be filled out for today. Let's start with our math songs. We're going to go through each one three times, and after that, we're going to go through without seeing the numbers. Who would like to lead the sixes song? At this time, you may open to page 46, and we're going to read through together, and then we'll be creating a graph. The name of this is Head Sizes. Ms. Woods owns a clothing store. She is trying to decide how many children's hats to stock in each possible size. Should she stock the same number of hats in each size, or should she stock more hats in some sizes and fewer in others? Help Ms. Woods decide. Pretend that she has asked each class in your school to collect and organize data about students' head sizes. She plans to combine the data and then use it to figure out how many hats of each size to stack. All right, I'm going to move this up here and then we're going to go over to our graph. If we are collecting the data that was just asked of us, the head sizes, what do you think would be a reasonable title for this? Right, a great title would be Head Sizes in 4th Grade Class. So why don't you write that down. Head Sizes in 4th Grade Class. It is a title, so all of the important words should be capitalized. When we're making this bar graph, on the bottom, it's going to be head sizes to the nearest centimeter. You can abbreviate centimeter CM. And then if we're writing these down, we have numbers between 49 and 54. So I would make this first box 49, then 50, then 51, then 52, then 53, and so on, then 54. Now my graph only goes up to 54, so I'm just going to stop there even though it doesn't fill in the whole bottom. And then as I add my boxes, it's going to be going up the side here. So what would a good label on this side or the y-axis be? Right, it'd be number of students. So write down number of students. Then we're going to fill in the boxes. I had five people with a head size of 49. So you're going to color in five of those boxes. Mine I'm not coloring completely just so you can simply see how many there are. At 50 I had 2, 51 I had 3, 52 I had 8, then I had 1 at 53, and 1 at 54. How many is that total? All right, it's 20. So we're, we know that we're dealing with 20 each time. So then you're going to be answering the questions. Find the following landmarks for the head size data shown in the bar graph. The minimum is the number on the bottom that is the smallest number. What is the smallest number written below? Right, it's 49. Out of all the head sizes, then, we need to find the maximum. What is the largest head somebody had in class? 54 is correct, so we'd write down 54. The range, then, is the maximum minus the minimum. What is our range? The mode is the one that happens the most. This is the one time that we're looking at how high up the graph goes. So which of these happens the most often? Or in other words, which goes up the highest? Right, it would definitely be 52. And then to find the medium, median, we have to cross off the largest and the smallest, the next largest, next smallest, 
And we continue this until we're working our way all the way to the middle. So one and one crossed off, one and one, one and one, one and one. I continue crossing off. Oh no, I landed between two different numbers here. So I'm actually between 51 and 52. Well, to find the median, it's the one right in the middle. So what number is right between 51 and 52? 51 and a half, or 51.5. So we had to write down 51.5. The question then is listed below. How would the landmarks above help Ms. Woods, a clothing store owner, decide how many baseball caps of each size to stock? Well, because of this, she knows the biggest one she needs to have. She knows the smallest. She knows what comes up the most often, so what she needs the most of. And she knows about what's at the middle. So you're going to explain how these numbers would actually help her. During class today, then, you're going to use the data that we all already have to finish page 47A, right here, answering the questions, and also by using 47B. 47B, you're going to be making a line plot of the data we just did, and then you're going to answer the question. After that, you're finishing math boxes. And then finally today, right now you need to mark off that you already did this first one, Math Masters. You did the Math Journal, page 46, and you need to finish page 47. You're almost done. 47A is the line plot, 47B is asking questions about the line plot, and then Math Boxes. Your teacher will be checking page 46, number 4, then you may go on to B or C.